Yes, roomies, welcome back to another video and thanks for joining me. So in today's video, we're going to give a long-awaited update on my female night and all and her enclosure behind me. So as we've got a few things I want to change, some enrichment things I want to get done, as well as some adding some new plants. So if you want to see what's going on, find out a little bit more about this enclosure and more about Cuban night and alls, then don't go anywhere. Welcome back. So, for those who've been following the channel a while, who remembers this? But something that I think that I want to try and achieve in, within these videos this year is I want to make sure that I look at every enclosure, every animal I have, and I'm looking at a way that we can improve it. So with any of my animals, I want to make sure that I'm giving them the best husbandry possible. Now that's because there's always new research and always new things coming out that will help you improve the way we care for our animals. Because let's face it, the reptile hobby is still relatively new. Now I want to make sure that I'm keeping up as much as I possibly can. Not just because they're trends, but mainly because I want to try and care for my animals in the best way I possibly can. Now I've done a lot of things on this enclosure as well as the others. And that is because is I'm doing more research and I'm always constantly trying to improve and make sure that animals as happy as possibly can be. So sometimes you may have seen videos like this in the past where I've attempted things, even added new plants in quite often and it doesn't work out. But it's through those things failing that makes you have a better understanding and try and find the answers as to why. Now we've done a lot of that recently on this enclosure as well as birds probably the majority of these things we've tried. And I'll go into that a little bit later on in the video as well. But there's some things I need to do. I want to get a bit of maintenance done. The glass needs cleaning. Some of the plants need trimming and some of the dead taken out. And I want to try and create some more climbing space and some things just for a bit more enrichment. Now, changing around these things can be really enriching for the animals, new smells, new feels, and obviously gives them more use of the enclosure. Because when I did made this enclosure, some of the hardscape materials have been in here since the beginning. And for those who've been following the channel a while, you'll know originally I housed my male plant chameleon in this enclosure. Now there's some liana branches and some vines that I've used ever since setting this up at first. But over time they've deteriorated and become less usable, so I want to see if we can repurpose those. And I've also got some new hardscape materials I want to trial out in here, as well as adding some new plants. So, this video is going to have a lot of time lapses, but I will rejoin you to explain things as I go on. So why don't we just crack on with today's video? Okay, so Castro is in a bit of a foul mood then, but she's knocked some of her, some of her bromeliads over as you can see. So we need to address that. So why don't we just take them out actually. And there's a few dead leaves and things like that I want to take out. Oh, come on, there we go. So we'll refix those in a bit. And there's another one there, which seems on its way out, but we'll give her another go. And as you can see, the Arna branch there, focus, um, has just pretty much disintegrated, but there's still quite a lot of it left, so we might try and reuse that. So we may as well take that out now, actually. Oh, actually, there's nothing really left of that. So we'll probably add it into the substrate, it's good organics for the soil as well. But a lot of the plants are doing really well at the moment, and that's thanks to the new Jungle Dawn LED light. And this brom here is pretty much gone as well, so we'll take that out. And so what I'm going to try and do now, I've got some hardscape that I want to try and add in. So why don't we see if we can work that out and then we'll carry on with the rest of the video.
So these might seem like minor changes and all I've done is add a few branches in there but as you can see Castro's already come out even though she was probably a little bit disturbed during enclosure to check out what's been going on. So she's already on the new vines we've added in there and it looks like when I come back into the room she was just about to have a little explore. So we managed to secure the hardscape now, which in turn then has also had extra opportunities to add more cover. So there's more cover in the middle of the enclosure now by adding those bromeliads in, which will make her feel a bit more secure, she'll have extra places to hide. There's a few more vertical and horizontal branches in there now, which she'll, I'm definitely, she'll appreciate. As you can see already, she is interested. But I want to add a little bit more cover in there now, so we're going to add the new plants in. But as always, I'll leave the titles of the plants in the description, as well as I'll probably pop them up on the screen. So if you want to get something similar yourself, you can do. But I think you're happy on your Castro. Do you like your new setup? Focus. Do you like your new focus? New focus? Do you like your new branches? We'll take there as a yeah. Let's get plants in. I don't know about you, but that is looking a lot better. But why am I adding new plants into this enclosure? It's not just to make the enclosure look a lot nicer and to take nicer pictures, but it also serves as a benefit for the animals themselves. Now, first of all, like I've already mentioned, it provides extra cover, which is really important because Castro is quite a shy animal and it's really nice for her to be able to explore the, her enclosure without feeling constantly exposed. And it might help me when it comes to interacting with her because I'm still in the process of trying to calm her down. It's not really working, but I knew she wasn't going to be a handleable animal in the first place. Now, secondly, plants are really good for the quality of air within your enclosure. And the more you add in, obviously, the better that's going to be. But with all bioactive setups, the plants are key because they do form the ecosystem themselves. So really important that we keep on top of those if you plan on doing a setup like this. But I think it's looking a lot better, but how do you know the glass needs a wipe down? So that's definitely a bit better. At least you can see actually into the enclosure. But now you've got a chance to see it, why don't we cue that pretty music and take a look.
So for those who haven't been following the channel, just to catch you up, there's been some things we've done to improve this setup. Now, um, not so long ago, we added a Jungle Dawn LED bar in there by Arcadia. Now, I wanted to add more visual light um, in this enclosure. One, to keep the plants healthy, which benefits the lizard itself, but also as well to get, give some more visible light because this tank was quite dark and I want to make sure that Castro knows where to bask. Now that has come with a bit of a caveat as well, because since adding this light in, not only the plants blossomed, and some of the plants are really doing well now, whereas in the past I was constantly taking some out and replacing them, but Castro herself, she's actually sometimes basking in the wrong area because that light is so bright and she may perceive that as the sunlight. So. Something I want to do going forward, where her basking heat lamp is. So going forward, something I want to add is a spotlight LED light under where her heat lamp is to make sure that she sees that as a sunlight or heat source so she doesn't mix the two up. So she's then getting her UV from a UVB on the T5. She's also getting heated up in the morning by a heat lamp and she's also identifying that visual light as where she needs to bask. So that's something we'll do. Now as well, I want to add a deep heat emitter because I want to get make sure that she has full spectrum lighting in the end. So this will provide you with infrared A and infrared B, which directly heats the lizard deep into their skin rather than just heating the ambient air around it. Now that will accompany then the heat lamp I've got, which I'm probably going to change to a halogen at some point as well. But at the moment, there's a radiant heat panel in there which covers the ambient temperature of the enclosure and that usually kicks on at night when the light's not on because it doesn't generate any light. But I do feel a deep heat emitter will be better for her than that. More recently as well, we added the Exoterra Monsoon Solo, which is the spraying system in there. Now I am considering, well I say considering, I'm going to upgrade to a Monsoon Multi because it, ha it can house up to six nozzles, which I think is probably more suitable for an enclosure and set up this size. Especially now we've added a densely planted tank in there as well. I want to make sure the plants stay alive because there's no point bringing plants in there to benefit the animal if they're dying. Now because Cuban nitinols need a high humidity and this roughly runs any between 65 to 80% humidity. Now I do allow the setup to dry out before adding more water into it. But obviously Castro does drink from leaves rather than stagnant water or water bowls. So I will be looking to add more ventilation into this tank. Now when I designed this tank initially we added a lot of extra venting along the back. And I also had USB fans installed which are not installed on here at the moment. But there's ventilation um, through the vents at the front here and then obviously the vents at the back. But I did add side vents, but unfortunately when we moved into this room, it didn't make much sense because they're pressed against the wall. So I am going to be adding extra ventilation down the side and along the top there as well. And I'm probably going to add two bigger vents into the roof of the enclosure. Now this will still allow better airflow, but it'll also allow me to control the heating a little bit better and the humidity a little bit better as well. So if I want it more humid and we haven't got stagnant air, I just need to mist it a few more times a day. Now I hope you've enjoyed today's video, maybe slightly different than some of the other videos we've done. Now I wanted to give you a chance to check out this enclosure because it's one of my earliest enclosures, something we've been always playing and tinkering with as well. But we've spent a lot of time on new setups recently and I thought it's about time we swing back and take a look at some of the other enclosures. We've been spending a lot of time on the fire bellies, a lot of time on the ADA 30C and we've got so many other things going on I thought it was about time we checked out something different. So if you've liked this sort of content, then make sure you let me know in the comments section below because I want to know if you like these sort of videos so I can carry on making them or we move on to something else. For as you guys know who follow along, there's plenty of exciting projects coming up. We've almost finished the Five Belly Toad Paladarium 2.0, which means then I can start moving on to the Ball Python Bioactive Bill, which I'm really excited about. But we haven't had a room, a full room tour for a while either just because I've been so busy, but we'll probably make one very soon and we've also We'll be getting a new animal as well, courtesy of Tim from Tim Reptiles, which is going to be a gecko species. So again, another bioactive build to come for that. 
So if this is the first video you've seen of mine, then I'd really appreciate if you can hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. As well, if you want to support the channel any more, I'll leave links, the links in the description for any of the items I've talked about today. If you want to buy those, then please use my link because I get a small commission. It doesn't cost you any more, but it just helps support the channel making more videos. And also you can check out my merch. There's channel, mar channel, mar march? channel art as well as fish keeping and reptile designs as well, which I hope you will enjoy and help support the channel. But I think that's enough of me waffling on for one day and I'll catch you in the next one.